Is obesity a choice? Of course it's a choice! Is obesity a choice? This has been the question. Nay, the debate that has been raging on throughout YouTube fitness over the past few months. So in this video, we're going to look at the case against it being a choice, the case for it being a choice, ask ourselves, is this even a useful question, and share with you my personal thoughts, which have changed considerably over the past few years. So first, let's look at the case for it being a choice. Now, you have the idea of calories in and calories out. So if you eat more calories than you burn, you will gain weight. And if you eat fewer calories than you burn, you will lose weight. Pretty simple. And this as a concept is pretty airtight. They've done lots and lots of studies where- I've only ever pointed out the fact that you get fat if you take in more calories than you burn off. That's simple science. It's not your insulin levels. It's not your hormone levels. If you consume too many calories, you will gain weight. And the only way to consume too many calories is to put that food in your mouth, which is a choice, which means that gaining weight and becoming obese is a choice. Uh, take that, libtards. <laughs> and there are plenty of studies that show that obese people in particular often dramatically underestimate how many calories they are actually consuming. So they think they're on a thousand calories per day and then it's actually measured accurately and it is far more than that. Might be 2000 calories per day or 2500 or 3000 calories per day. A lot of people who claim to not be able to lose weight or lose fat on a super low level of calories, that's just not what they're actually consuming, right? And there is Sometimes a level of delusion here that I have witnessed as a coach, which can be quite profound. So they think they're making the right choices, but they're putting a bunch of mayonnaise on their salad or something, and they're actually consuming way more calories than they think. No one got fat behind their own back. <laughs> no one ate and, ate and went, what the fuck's that? Okay. <laughs> It's not a surprise, it's a gradual process. You have loads of time to back out from this project. <laughs> and it... Furthermore, our genetics as a species, and when someone blames their genetics for being fat, our genetics as a species has not changed appreciably over the past few decades. Rates of obesity have gone sky high, but you can't exactly blame your genetics when we have the same overall genetics as we did in the 1950s when obesity was quite low. So it is clearly not genetics, right? I mean, you can look back at old footage and not very many people were obese. Because we have the same genes, well, genetics can't be a factor. You also have the recent trend for people celebrating obesity. This is not just fat acceptance, but fat celebration. And this is making it easier for it to be a valid choice. And maybe if these people were just shamed a little bit more, they would have more incentive to make the right choices and just be skinny. And one content creator made the analogy of you're trapped in a burning building and you have to get out in order to save yourself. And if you're on the first floor, it's a pretty easy choice. You just climb out the window, boom, you're done. If you're on the third floor, it's a little bit more difficult. You might jump out and, and break a leg or something. If you're on the 10th floor, well, then it's a very difficult choice, but it's still your choice. And this is obviously a perfectly valid and acceptable comparison towards eating a piece of cake. You can take me as an example. If I wanna gain weight, if I wanna bulk up, I just eat more. If I wanna cut, if I wanna get shredded bra, I just eat a little bit less, and then my body basically just does what I want it to do. And because that is my experience, this applies to everyone else. So if I can do it, why can't you do it, right? Because we're all basically the same in this regard, and if I can make the choices like this, why can't you? I mean, I've never struggled with my weight, so why the hell are other people? And we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Like, how hard is it to actually find the time to work out? It's only, I mean, one hour a day is 4% of the day. You can't find time to work out? What is wrong with you? You're a single mother and you have three kids and you're working two jobs and you're stressed all the time? Like, just get it done. 
Just sign up for my $3,000 per month coaching. I will yell at you until you see results. Or, or until you don't, but no money back. And thousands of people have lost weight and successfully kept it off. It doesn't matter that it's only a tiny percentage of the people who try, and that a lot of people who actually try end up rebounding and going actually higher than their initial body weight. No, okay? Thousands of people have been successful. So you can be successful too, right? You just have to make the right choices. And it really is about personal responsibility, which is why I'm going to make it my business. As we've established, you choose whether to eat too much or not, you know? And ultimately, yeah, for some people, maybe the choice is more difficult, but it's still a choice. I rest my case, Your Honor. Nothing wrong with it. It's their choice. It's up to you if you want to be fat. It's fine. So here's the case against it being a choice. Now, let's start at the start. Before you were born, your genetics. Some people are predisposed to weight gain. It could be your metabolism. This varies wildly just in terms of your basal metabolic rate, how much energy you are burning doing nothing at all. Nothing at all! Or NEAT levels, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, also vary wildly as well. Some people actually respond to overfeeding by burning way more calories, while some people strangely burn fewer calories, right? Like if you give some people carbohydrates or sugar or, or some kind of like starchy food, they start fidgeting. They start just, you know, tapping their foot. They start sweating. They start burning off that energy where some people, they take a nap instead. So there is a wide variety of responses to overfeeding to the point that some people gain 10 pounds. Some people gain 30 pounds in an overfeeding study. Furthermore, some people just have a different pleasure response to food. So I noticed this growing up. I know I like food, but I didn't like really like food. Some people, they were really into food. It was the highlight of their day. You just, you know, you saw them eat and they were just like, they were into it. They were in another place. For me, like if I missed a meal, eh, not that big a deal. But for some people, they just have a completely different relationship with food. And so there's a large genetic component here. And then there's also your upbringing. When you are a child, you don't have full control over what you are eating. Therefore, it is not really a choice. And these habits can be difficult to break. It can also impact your gut microbiome, which can absolutely impact your metabolism. It can impact your food preferences. And again, your relationship with food. Hunger, appetite, these vary massively as well. Some people, they get hungrier more often and they just have a bigger appetite so they consume more food per meal. Some people are more easily satiated. And if you're someone who has never struggled with their weight, it's very easy for you to say, oh, like if I was in their situation, I'd be fine. But how the fuck do you know that? You have no idea. It's very easy to say, oh, well, if I can do something, anyone can do it. That is delusional on a massive scale. And if you have an audience and you're pushing this kind of message, I understand how for some people it might actually be a positive, right? Like it's your choice. It's a positive. But to a certain extent, you're also saying, well, you are like this because of your choices. There are some people who make all the wrong choices in terms of gaining fat, and yet they're still skinny. And there are some people who make pretty much all the right choices, and they're still obese, right? And so it's not as simple as, oh, we all have the same choices. Trauma, coping food deserts, food environment. Again, these are all things that maybe they're in your control, but a lot of it is not. And it is a very nuanced conversation. And a lot of people aren't actually prepared to delve into the nuance because often that shows that they are wrong. A lot of people in the fitness industry, they have personal issues with fat, with the idea of being fat, with the idea of having this layer on top of your body of having a jawline that is not perfectly sculpted and often this influences the content that they make and when they see someone who is fat they feel disgusted revolted they try to push them away and just speaking personally i know that working as a coach with people who really genuinely struggle with their weight has changed my perspective quite a bit because 
Sometimes I question if these people actually coach or what their coaching style actually entails. Because when you talk with people who have struggled with this for years and decades, you slowly start to realize that there is a lot of nuance here. And it's not as simple as consume less calories, eat less calories, get in a caloric deficit, right? Like you have to address the why, otherwise you're not going to solve the problem. And is it a choice? <sighs> now, Lane Norton also put out a post saying that his opinions have changed over the past few years working as a coach and working in the fitness industry. And this is a trend that I've noticed a few different times. You have to approach it with empathy and understanding. Like that has to be your starting point, not just, oh, it's your fault or like we all have the same 24 hours. Like, why can't you get it done? That is not helpful. That is not useful. On the other hand, I am big into personal accountability, but it has to be personal accountability, okay? You can't just blame other people and, and come at it from a negative point of view. That doesn't work very often. Sometimes, but for every comment that you see like, oh, this person woke me up with their yelling. There are many, many, many people for whom that didn't work. You just don't see them commenting it. I do think thinking it is a choice is potentially a useful way of thinking about it, but it's also potentially not that useful. Yes, making better choices will help you get to your goals, but you still have to understand why you are making the choices you are making and understand the underlying conditions that impact the entire process. And I used to be kind of a dick about this, right? Before I actually worked with overweight people and obese people, you see someone walking down the street and, you know, they're, they're morbidly obese and you're just thinking like, fucking, I bet, I bet their diet sucks or like, I bet they're lazy or I bet they're this kind of person. And maybe they are, but maybe they're not. You just don't know until you actually talk to them and work with them and, and experience what they are experiencing which you'll never be able to do to the fullest capacity because you are not them. And so is obesity a choice? Well, it's not a yes or no answer. It was never going to be a yes or no answer. Well, I don't like that. And if you're the kind of person who was expecting this to be a yes or no answer, well, you have to realize, again, there's so much nuance. There's so many factors that go into the equation, some of which you see, some of which you don't see. To a certain extent, it's kind of a theoretical or philosophical question, right? Do any of us have any choice at all, right? Am I touching my nose now because I want to or because all of the situations that led to this point led me to touching my nose? At the end of the day, we're just molecules and atoms drifting through the universe, baby. Some people have a few more molecules of adipose tissue, but they're still people. And we should try to understand why they are in the situation that they are in. That is actually useful. All right, that is all for this video. If you like this video, consider grabbing a copy of my book. It will help you on the training side of things. It doesn't go too much into diet or nutrition, but there's a ton of useful information there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.